need to understand and to know. All right, Silas. Number two. Number two? All right. <clears throat> So number two says, the table shows how the cost of a tractor repair depends on the time needed for the repair. So essentially, cost depends on the time, okay? Um, you have a table. Remember, all tables are dealing with equivalent ratios. So no matter what the table looks like, it's just equivalent ratios in that table. Um, and then it's asking which expression can be used to find the number of the missing row. All right, so essentially, you're not necessarily solving this problem, but you're, it's a, you do have to understand how to figure this out. Um, how many of you guys picked A? Stand up if you picked A. Start that. Yes. Stand up if you picked A. Okay. All right. Have a seat. Stand up if you picked B. Okay. That's fine. Stand up if you picked C. And stand up if you picked D. And then have a seat, stand up if you weren't sure. Because right now, that's, we might not be sure with, um, Alex, I know you are not playing a game right now. Like I'm sitting here still looking at your computer or your iPad. We are reviewing for your test tomorrow. Take everything except for your iPad and go sit outside to where you can still see the TV and only be focused on that. Guys, I still have your iPads up here. Let me let me disconnect and show you. It's still here. I still see everything. When are we going to realize that your teachers can see what you're doing? Please stop. We're reviewing. Just follow along. Y'all wonder why I'm crazy all the time. Exactly. Um, all right. So stand up and pick A again. Real quick, I'm sorry. It's okay. It, it's okay, guys. Like, if you pick A, I need you to stand up. All right, so what made you pick A? Because I did 635 by 7, and I got that. I did 635 by 7. Okay, so what made you pick seven though? Like, what was what was your like thought process? So I took five and four hundred fifty, and then I added the one eighty, which got me six hundred thirty. Then I basically added five and two, which got me seven. So I just added six hundred thirty divided by seven. Okay, so you kind of use this row to help you, and then you, and that's fine. That's a process that you can use. Um. Stand up if you pick, we didn't have anybody pick B, right? No. Okay, B is definitely not the right answer. Um, because B, when you do 450 divided by five, you found out the unit rate, which is 90 to one, or one to 90, however you want to say it. All right, then obviously, it's not gonna be C either. So you're left with A and you're left with D. So if you picked one of those, you have a 50-50 chance right now of getting it right. Yes, Summer. What? Huh? Did you want to share? <laughs> you divided what, sweetie? A and D. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so if you pick D, stand up or raise your hand if you pick D. All right, Samantha, why did you pick D? Because I 
Okay. And then I took 630 and divided by 90. And so 90 is... And the others took um, the hours and multiplied it by 90. Okay. So you kind of did a little bit of both. You checked, like double checked almost. Um, the key is making sure that you find out that for one hour it costs $90. That's the key in this one. Okay. And then you can kind of go from there. And you can say, well, what times 9 gives me 630? You can do it that way. You can say, well, what times 1 gives me 90? I mean, but there's lots of different ways that you guys can figure this out. But the correct answer for this one is D. Okay? So please make sure that you guys have the few notes added and you have the work done correctly. <laughs> Thumbs up when you're ready to move on. All right, okay, which one? Number eight. All right, so number eight says, Tracy exercises by walking and running laps around a track. For every two laps she walks, she runs three laps. Which statement is true? So essentially, our ratio is two laps to three laps, sorry, this is walk, to three laps run, right? So that's your ratio. Um, and again, this is why it's important to understand like what your, your numbers are standing for. So for A, it says for every lap Tracy runs, she walks two and one third laps. Well, is our ratio in simplest form? This ratio right here, is this ratio in simplest form? Yes. Excuse me. Okay, so then we know that if she's running one lap, is she doing one and a half laps walking? No. She's not. Okay, because that's essentially, this right here equals one and a half laps. Right? Because three to two is, or three halves is... Um, one and a half. All right, for every lap that Tracy walks, she runs three fifths of a lap. What do you guys think about that one? Yes or no? No. No? Don't agree with that one either? Okay. What about C? For every lap Tracy runs, she walks two fifths of a lap. No. No? All right, so why is it no for A, B, and C? Raise your hand. Like, what's your reasoning for A, B, and C? Drake. Well, for A and C, she walks first. She doesn't run first. She walks first. Then she runs. Okay. And so, so the five isn't like even with the two, so it makes sense. Where do they get the five from? Do you know? Could they have added the laps and ran and walked together to get that? Okay. But is it asking you for that? No. 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 Okay. So a couple different things to keep in mind. So. B and D, or B and C are definitely out because it's not asking for the total. And that gives you the ratio of laps walk to total, laps run to total. A is not because, like Drake said, it's talking about walking then running. So the answer is D. Okay. You got it right? How many of you guys got this one right? If you did it. All right, and some of these questions, guys, there's not a lot of work to do. It's more of just kind of thinking through the process of, of ratios and understanding them. All right, what is another one? All right, Christian? Nine. Number nine. Okay, so number nine says, um, Eliana and Gary have a TV show on, or have a talk show on TV. Eliana has been on 525 episodes of the show, and Gary has been on 325 episodes. What is the ratio of episodes with Gary to episodes of Eliana? Now, going through, so it says Eliana has been on 523 episodes, Gary has been on 325 episodes. Our question is asking, what is the ratio with Gary to Eliana? So you're going 
Gary first, Eliana second. So technically, you need to set it up as 325 to 525. If you didn't set it up that way, this might be the reason why you get this one wrong, because what matters? Like, order matters. All right, and then from here, looking at your answer choices, obviously it's not 325 to 525. What do you have to do here? You have to simplify. Um, so what is, raise your hand, a number that you can simplify both 325 by and 525 by? 25. 25? So I'm going to divide 25 by both, or both those numbers by 25. What is 325 divided by 25? Crazy. Uh, 13. Okay. And then 525 divided by 25? 21. All right, so shh. That eliminates B, that eliminates C, and that eliminates D. Okay? So just be careful because if you don't set this up right and you don't follow the order of the question, you're going to pick C, and C is going to be wrong. Okay? This is just simply a um, simplifying ratio question. Uh, please make sure if you have not done these last two questions that you are completing these as we're going through them. Okay, how many of you guys did this problem? If you didn't do it, you should be doing it right now. That is part of going over this. Are you up? I mean, if you didn't do it, complete it while we're going through it, or... Yeah. Thumbs up when you're ready to move on, please. All right, what's another one you guys would like to go over? <clears throat> Everly. Seven. Number seven. So number seven says in George's classroom there are six girls for every two boys. What is the ratio of boys to the total number of students? All right, so we know six girls for every two boys. So our original ratio is six girls to two boys. Okay? Now the question is asking what is the ratio of boys to total number of students? So we need boys. Do we already have that number? Yes. All right, so we're going to have two boys. And then total number. Eight. Stop calling out. How do we figure out what the total number is? Uh, Summer. So we're going to do six plus two. That is going to give us eight. So we have a total of eight students. Now, looking at our answer choices, do you see 2 to 8? No. So what do we have to do with 2 to 8? Uh, BK. Simplify by. Simplify by 2. Okay. Which gives me 1 to 4. So do you see 1 to 4 up there? Okay. So that is your answer. Again, understanding order matters, as well as understanding that total number means what do you have to do when you're trying to find the total number of something? Add all of them. You have to add them. All right, what is another one you guys would like to go over? Blake? All right, number five. It says the figure below shows a group of circles with four of them shaded. How many shaded circles are there for each unshaded circle? All right, so we know that there are four shaded um, circles because that's what it tells us. And the question is, how many shaded circles are there for each unshaded circle? So what is our original ratio? Let's start with that. What is our original ratio? Because if you don't know the original ratio, it's hard to answer this question. Uh, Gracie. And where did you get 12 from? Okay, so if you count the unshaded circles, you get 8, but then you've got to add the four shaded ones. Why? Because 
Did it ask you for the total? What is the question asking? All right, so in this one, as easy as it looks, it's not that easy because you have to understand what that question is asking. So it says, how many shaded circles are there for unshaded circles? It's not asking you for the total. It's asking you for like shaded to unshaded. So how many unshaded circles do we have in this picture? Crazy? Eight. Eight. So technically, my original ratio is four to eight. Okay, and then looking at our answer choices, we obviously don't have that, so what do we have to do with four to eight? Um, Silas H. Five. Okay, which gives me one to two. So this is saying for every one shaded circle, there are two unshaded circles. Okay, that's what this one is saying. Um, so your answer should be A. Again, please make sure that if you did not do this one, that you Make sure it's correct, you annotate it, and you solve it. Mason, I'm going to make you stand up, son. You are entirely too comfortable right now. All right, what other ones would you like to go over? I'm um, sorry, is everybody done with this one? Is everybody done with number five? Yes. Okay, right, number six. So it says, uh, Carrie's mom has these flavors of juice boxes in a cooler. So she has four grape, six fruit, ten orange. What is the ratio of the number of grape juice boxes to the total number of juice boxes in the cooler? All right, so we know we have these. We're looking for what is the ratio of the number of grape juice boxes to the total number of juice boxes? So our order is going to be grape juice boxes to total number. Does that mean that I'm only adding the grape to one of them or am I adding the grape to all of them? All of them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is do 10, six, four. I'm gonna add those. Raise your hand and tell me what is 10 plus six plus four. Uh, Kira, 20. All right, and then how many grape ones do I have? Summer. So I have four to 20. Is that an answer choice? No. no, it is not. What do I have to do with four to 20? Uh, Silas? Bye. Which gives me one, two, five. Okay, again, please make sure you have these, this completed in your notebook. Make, I know you are not drawing in your notebook, sweetie. Make sure you have this completed in your notebook. Make sure that you have the work done as well. And again, guys, if I am boring you, that's fine. We can just go ahead and take the test now. No, I'm very entertained. I'm not entertained by the lack of... You don't want to take the test. Because there's five and a half people that will pass based off of what I'm seeing right now. All right. The people who are participating. Everybody else is going. All right, let's go to number 10. So it says, Mr. McIntyre had some colored pencils for his students to use. So you have your table of blue, green, orange, and red. It says, what is the ratio of the number of red pencils to the number of orange and blue pencils? All right. Are you serious right now? No. All right, so our ratio. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? And the reason why I feel like I should just give you all the test because like I'm just wasting my energy because I legit have one, two, three and a half, three and a half people that are participating summer. So four and a half people participating right now. If this is so easy that we don't need to review, then let's just take our test. Like for real? Joshua, what are we looking for, sweetie? Number 
So we're looking for red to orange and blue. So does that mean we're adding the total of all of them? Or what? Are, how are we solving? Because this problem is a little bit different than finding the total. Ansley. So I'm just going to add orange and blue. So I have orange, which is 6, blue, which is 8. So what is 6 plus 8? Ansley? 14. And then we have red, which is 6. All right, do you see 6 to 14 as your answer choice? All right, what do we have to do then? Reagan, what do you have to do with 6 to 14? Bye. So that is going to give me 3 to 7. Do we have 3 to 7 as an answer choice? Okay. All right. Questions about ratios. You guys feel pretty good about the ratio parts? Yeah. All right. Let's go to number 16. All right, number 16 says, Taylor started a service project at school making pillows for children in the hospital. For every four yards of fabric, she can make five pillows. Which of the following tables shows equivalent ratios that relate to the yards of fabric used and the pillows made? Now, if you have done your, imagine or your Delta Math at all this week, this is straight from that almost. You have to figure out which table has equivalent ratios. All right, you're gonna see a couple of questions tomorrow like this on your test. So I just wanna make sure that we all understand how to figure this out. Um, so your ratio is for every four yards, she can make five pillows. Lord have mercy. So you have four yards, five pillows. All right, you have to figure out which one of these tables are all equivalent. All right, so if you have not done this one, raise your hand. If you did not do 16. So I'm going to give you about two minutes um, to get this one done. If you have done this one and completed it, please stand up. When you're finished, go ahead and stand up for me. If you are finished, you need to be standing up, please.
right, have a seat. Stand up if you picked A. Stand up if you picked A. Stand up if you picked B. Stand up if you picked C. Stand up if you picked D. All right, we are going to eliminate A and D. Why? Why can we eliminate A? Let's start with that one. Uh, Kira. Right, it's not five to four. The original ratio is four to five, so good job. Why can we get rid of D then, Isaac? Oh, because it's going up by two and four. Right, so one side's going up by two, one side's going up by four, and you know with a, a ratio table, you have to do the same on both sides. You can't go up by one on one side, one on the other side. So now we're left with B and C. So the best way that I can explain to do this is you just go and you say, okay, five times what gives me 10? Two. Gabriel, two. So then I have to also multiply this by two. So far that works, right? I can't even talk. That works, right? All right, so the next one, five times what gives me 15? Blake. So I have to multiply this by three. All right, so this one, four times three gives me 12. So far so good? Okay. This one, five times what gives me 30? Six. six. All right, which means I have to multiply four times six, which does not give me 16. So that means that is not the right answer. This takes a tad bit longer, but this is the foolproof way to do ratio tables. All right, let's just check to make sure as well so you guys have an example on your um, iPads as well. So, same process, 5 times 2 gives me 10, 4 times 2 gives me 8, 5 times 3 gives me 15, 4 times 3 gives me 12, 5 times what gives me 35, Gabriel? So, multiply that by 7, 4 times 7 gives me 28, okay? Does everybody understand that? Okay. Um, if you do not understand, you need to see me during wind block today. Like, honestly, if you do not understand ratio tables, ask your wind teacher if you can come and we will sit and do a couple of these problems together so that you get a full understanding of these. Because these are a huge part of uh, your benchmark coming up in January, which seems like a really far, long time away, but it's not. Brian, please call the front office. As well as it's going to be a huge part of your EOG. Okay, you have to understand equivalent ratios. All right. Um, oh, I got plenty of time. All right, let's do some percent problems because as much as y'all love ratios, percents are what we struggle with, apparently. Okay. Looking at sh number 17. Raise your hand if you've done 17. All right, so this should be fairly quick then. With a certain uh, school club, in a certain school club, 40% of the members are boys. If there are 45 members of the club, how many of them are boys? So 40% are boys. This is a total of 45 members, and we need to know how many of them are boys. We have our percent, right? So we know we are not finding percent. We know that there are 45 members, which is my total, also known as my what? My whole. Okay, and then from here, what do we do? Kira? Cross multiply and then, and then what? Divide, so you're gonna do 45 times 40. Mason, you should not be coloring on your iPad right now. You should be doing the work in your notebook, sweetie. Um, Christian. And then I'm going to divide by 100. These are the ones we really like because they're really easy because you just drop your zeros and you end up with your answer of 18. All right, we have legit seen this one about 842 times. Please, y'all, don't, don't get these wrong. I got 180, so I forgot to add back. Okay, so just be careful with that, okay? 
All right, let's go on. Let's talk about number 18. So number 18 says 20% of the students in sixth grade or in the sixth grade class choose pizza for lunch. This means that six students chose pizza. How many students are in the sixth grade class? So 20%. And this means six students chose pizza, and we need to know how many students are in the sixth grade class. Um, so this sentence essentially tells us what about our setup. This sentence right here, that's telling us we're looking for the what? Zachary? Okay. The whole. So we're not sure what it is. All right, everything else we have already. We have our 20% and we have our six people. Please go ahead and solve this problem. If you have not solved this problem, if you have solved this problem, please go ahead and stand up for me. All right, so you cross multiply and then you divide. So 100 times six gives us what? 600. 600, 600 divided by 20, I'm gonna take my zeros off. I can only take one. What is 60 divided by two? 30. So my answer for this question is 30. Okay, questions about that one? How did we do? All right, let's look at number 19. I know this is a ratio question, but um, I just want to make sure that everybody understands how to use a graph to still solve ratios. Um, so it says Ashley represents, uh, represented the number of books she read last year on the bar graph. So you have mysteries. How many did she read? Isaac? 20. You have nonfiction. How many did she read? Uh, Samantha? 50. And science fiction, how many did she read, Blake? Uh, 30. 30. All right, it says, what is the ratio of nonfiction books to science fiction books? So this is what we're looking for. So we have nonfiction first, and then we have science fiction second. So how many nonfiction books did she read based off of our bar graph? <coughs> How many nonfiction did she read based off of the bar graph? Uh, BK? 50. 50. And how many science fiction books did she read? Ansley? 30. So do we see 50 to 30 as an answer choice? All right, so raise your hand and tell me what do I have to do here? What do I have to do? Uh, Angel? Five. Ten. By 10. So that's going to give me five to three. Do we see five to three up here? Yes. Yes, we do. Okay. Questions about that type of ratio question? Feel good? Yes, no, maybe, maybe not. Okay. All right, let's go to number 22. Okay. So now knowing what you know about um, ratio tables, how many of you guys have solved this one? Oh, perfect. Go ahead and solve. So based off of the way that we solved the last question with ratio tables as our answers, I want you guys to use that and I want you to solve this one. I'm going to give you three minutes. So number 22, you're solving number 22.
I have a question on school net. Can you guys write on the screen? No. You can just highlight, right? Yeah. Can you like use your highlighter on other parts of? Yeah. I mean, it's like a space. There's some dead zones. Most of the time. Do you want me to try a little No. Um, the reason I was wondering is like for a question like this, would you be able to write like by the answer choices? No. Okay. That's all. I was just wondering. Sometimes. Sometimes. Looks like it is. All right, so let's go ahead and um, have a seat. All right, stand up if you pick A. I love when I'm an amazing teacher and y'all are fantastic and you listen. <laughs> y'all are much better than all my other classes, but we're not going to say that. Even though I just recorded this. All right. Have a seat. I don't have favorites, but if I had favorites, it would definitely be y'all. Favorite what? In the classroom? I have to say my child. Even though he's not. All right, let's quickly go. Let's quickly go over this. Now, I have a question for you guys. The one to four, is that one to four or is that one four? It's one, two, four. So, if it is one to four, we know that that eliminates B right away. Also, does, does the one go with math or does the one go with science? That's the other question. How do you guys know? Raise your hand. How do you know that the one goes with math and the four goes with science? How do you know? Um, Silas. Yes. All right. So knowing this, one to four, we also can eliminate, technically, we can eliminate D. So you're left with A and C. And at this point, it's a 50-50 chance. Hopefully, you guys went ahead and did the math that made sense. So you'd multiply by two, multiply by two, and then multiply by three, multiply by three. Why does this one not work? Why does C not work? Um, here. Right, I mean you can, but it doesn't work on both sides, right? Okay, so C is gone which means our answer is A. All right, listen very carefully. 